Chancellor Wilson, President Gertler, uh, distinguished members of the platform party, honored guests, um, and most important, the graduating class of 2016, and your family and friends. I'm delighted to be with you today, and that for three reasons. Um, first of all, I'm deeply grateful to this university, one of the jewels of global higher education, for honoring me in this way. Second, and I confess this to the immigration officer at Pearson Airport yesterday who asked me why I was coming. Given the political turmoil in my own country, <laughs> I am auditioning today <laughs> for landed status as a political refugee come November. But third, and most important, I am delighted to be joining in today's celebration of the accomplishments of the graduates of 2016, my soon-to-be fellow alumni of UT. And it is to you that I wish to speak now. You are, I'm sure, feeling at this moment a variety of emotions, joy, and, and not a little pride at what you've accomplished, months and years of hard work and perseverance and moments of doubt and moments of great insight have culminated in today's ceremony. So enjoy the joy. You've worked hard to deserve it. Secondly, I imagine you're feeling gratitude to your family and friends and to your teachers and your support network for helping you reach this day. Let's express that gratitude too. And third, you are no doubt feeling anticipation for what the next stage of your life will bring, your next professional achievements, the deepening pleasures of family and friends and community, and your role of leadership in the broader Canadian community. Because the degree you receive today also signifies that you will Willy-nilly, you will play a leadership role. As a friend of mine is fond of saying, your lives will speak. And in the moments that remain to me, I want to reflect on those broader responsibilities that await you, drawing on my, drawing on my own life experiences and on my own research, which you've heard a brief summary of just now, especially framed in the balance that I want to talk about use today between an I society and a we society. So let me begin with a personal story. More than a half century ago, I took my first, first course in political science. Um, there was a smart, cute co-ed, as we said then, uh, in the class with me. And we started hanging out together. Uh, we still are, she's sitting right here 50, <laughs> 55 years later. That's Rosemary, for remembrance. On a snowy day in January of 1961, Rosemary and I took a train from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C., and we stood at the back of the crowd and heard John Kennedy admonish us to ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. That was a long time ago, and honestly, it was one of the most important moments in my life. America in the 1960s was a society that put special emphasis on we and on our obligations to one another. And my generation heard JFK speaking directly to us. I personally thought he was speaking to me and that, that moment powerfully influenced my life. So now it's fair to ask a half century later, how have we done? How has America changed? in the last half century. We've seen some notable progress. America is richer, a lot richer, than we were in 1960, 61. We have greater racial 
and gender equality. Not enough, but we've made progress. We have more tolerance for diversity than was true. We have niftier telephones than we did then. But in one fundamental way, we have failed Kennedy's challenge. For in my lifetime, America has become much less a we society and much more an I society. Much of my own life's work it has, it turns out, simply chronicled this sea change from we to I. In terms of economics and social class, as I've discussed in my most recent book, Our Kids, America has become much less equal and much more polarized into rich and poor. In sociological terms, America has become much more segregated into enclaves of rich and poor. We're less segregated in religious terms, we're less segregated in racial terms even, but we're much more segregated in terms of whom we, where we live and who our kids go to school with and, and in terms of even of whom we marry. America is much more segregated into separate economically defined enclaves. Americans have become much less connected to one another, much less neighborly, much less civically engaged. We're even voting less and we're bowling alone. Americans are less charitable than we were. Though we are much wealthier, we give less of our increased wealth to others than once we did. We are a less generous people, both materially and even emotionally. Americans are much more polarized politically into factions that no longer aim to solve problems through conversation and through cooperation, but merely shout insults at one another. America is a grumpier, more cynical, more self-centered, and yes, more selfish society than when Rosemary and I stood in the crowd and heard John Kennedy speak. In short, we have become more an I society. My society has become more an I society and stopped being a we society. An I society that ignore, ignores our obligations to others today and, and this is important to our neighbors, in environmental terms, a society that ignores our obligations to future generations, to that broader we at home and abroad, whose fate by our decisions we are adversely affecting. I do not know whether anything similar has happened in Canada over these years. I have no doubt that compared to America, Canada is a nicer society. <laughs> Canada is, a, is more of a we society. But the more relevant question for you, not for me, is whether Canada in 2016 is more of a we or more of an I society than Canada was 50 years ago. I doubt that any change is as marked here as in my country. But I also doubt that you have been entirely immune to the global trend toward an I society. And if so, your generation has the challenge and the opportunity to hear again Kennedy's challenge, to ask not what Canada can do for you, but what you can do for other Canadians. Raise your voices, express your views, but talk is not enough. As I said at the outset, your lives will speak loudly. So the question I ask is, what will they say? What will your lives say? I'm more than hopeful. I'm optimistic. You've got a great start at this great university. So I'm, I'm optimistic. So enjoy the joy you feel today. Express the gratitude you feel today. And give a thought to what your life will say. Thank you very much.